Hey guys, Targo Cycle and FPV, and we are actually going to be working today on a Sector 5 V3, and we're going to be installing an R9 um, uh, Slim OTA, R9 Slim Plus OTA, right here, and we're going to be running access on it. So I figured we'll go ahead and do an install video and show you guys how we're going to do this, okay? First thing we're going to do, again, uh, the one part I do not like is having to take these uh, sectors apart, but we're going to just go ahead and knock it out anyway. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And the reason we're going to do that is we do need to get down to even though HDLRC puts the flight controller, um, sorry, the receiver wires out here, we're going to need to actually get down there uh, onto the board itself so we can put in the telemetry setup as well. So we're just going to knock that out real quickly. And then we're going to figure out how we want to position the antenna. So let me just get this part done. And I'll start putting the screws over here, I guess. size on there never mind we'll do this one here I gotta change the bits out I forgot I was working on something else earlier so let me go ahead and just knock this out real quick it is Friday by the way hope you guys are have have some good plans for the weekend uh, I can see my boys today so we're gonna have some fun that's for sure all right I'm gonna try taking it out this way this time because I hate taking this thing apart it's such a pain so let me see if I can just leave all the camera stuff together uh, let me just see if I can remove this base and get it out of here. All right. There we go. And yeah, that looks like that'll be fine. So I'll just take the wire out of the camera, if that is. There we go. Perfect. It's much easier. All right. So what we're gonna do here is, let's look at where they've got us wired so far. Uh, we've got the GPS here, so we'll just disconnect that as well. And we're gonna focus on our receiver connection, okay? So we have uh, RX1 uh, right here, and this is where the S bus is gonna be coming in. And then what we have also is we are looking for our TX as well, so we can run an S port. So um, I'm gonna see here, I don't believe that we're using TX4 for anything on this, but actually it could be ESC telemetry. So let me just, let me check. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead, I think my computer's not frozen anymore, there it goes. I'm going to um, uh, turn on the computer here, share that screen with you as well, and you can see what I'm talking about, okay? So let me get this out of the way. Let's move this here. And let me get the cable, where's my, this is what, yeah. Okay, so we'll plug this in and we'll open beta flight and then I'll show you guys the computer screen, okay? There we go. You open beta flight. It smells like something's burning over here, so I'm a little concerned. But, you know, my soldering iron's on, I'm not sure if that's what's burning. Sounds like a burning plastic, that's all I need. All right, uh, so let's see, let me add that screen. There we go. Okay, so what we wanna do is, let's wait for our port to show up, here we go. Let's see what they have reserved for us, okay? So we have four is gonna be, actually they don't have a dedicated four for anything right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna tell it that we're gonna dedicate it uh, uh, um, for our information smart port, okay? And that's what we're gonna do for our telemetry, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and set this up, and sometimes it can be a little quirky to work this around, but we've got two is for GPS, five, six is for ESC. Now, if you had a um, DJI setup on here, right, then you would be using four for your telemetry, and then you wouldn't need to be doing this anyway. But since not, we have UART4 uh, open, so that's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna connect our S port to TX4, and that will transport the, uh, transmit the information back. So let's go ahead and do that. I can save this real quickly. All right, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of that and let's go back to our setup here, okay? Here go, right, all right, so it's unplugged. Now, um, if you look at the, if you look at your uh, R9 Slim Plus OTA, you're gonna have two connections here. We're actually gonna be dealing with connection one. So connection one are these wires right here, okay? And connection two wires, which I put right here, we're not gonna be using, but we will include these to the customer so that he or she can set these up if they want. 
even though their label connection one and connection two and the wires don't match, you could, if you ever damage connection one, you could use connection two in place of it. You just need to make note of the wire color changes because it's not gonna line up if you turn them over. This is color coded for connection one uh, attachments and the other one is connection, color coded for connection two. So if you try to put connection one on connection two, your ground wire won't be black. It'll be a different color, okay? But you can still use it just in case something ever happens. All right, so let me put connection two aside and we're gonna work with connection one. And the reason we're working with connection one is because we want VCC, we want S port, we want S bus uh, out, and we want our ground. And we're not gonna worry about anything else on either side right now, okay? All right, so here we go. Uh, let me see, now I gotta look here and make sure that I have my, I can't see, I need to get my old man glasses, sorry. All right, so this is gonna be, uh, connection one right here it says uh, CON1 and here's my connection one which is labeled here so we're gonna go ahead and plug this in uh, let me show you this right that should be just like this there we go all right now if you look at the wiring colors here you'll see so we have an orangish red well we have a red here and then we have green for S port okay and then we have S bus in, we will not be using. And then we have S bus out, which is what we will be using. That's a gray wire. Uh, and then we are going to use, uh, let me see what else. Um, just our ground, I guess, really. All right, so let's do that one. So let me just tile these up and we'll see what we're gonna do with the rest of these. I may, I may take them, I may, I may remove them from the harness all together, but still give them to the customer. So he or she can put the back in. So let's just start wiring this up. All right. And I'm going to remove the plug so I can just wire here and I'm going to remove what HDLRC has added uh, from their end. So let me get my tweezers. Not these ones, I have another pair somewhere here. Let me find those. Where did I put them? Can't see anything. Here we go. All right. So let's do this. Set that aside. Let's take the harness from here. It's already tinned, ready to go. So let's just get to it. We'll go ground. Okay. And we're gonna go with our five volt here. All right. And then we are gonna go with our S bus, which is gray. So we're gonna take our gray wire here. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and prep TX4. So let me get my. Uh, da -da -da -da. Here it is. Flux pin. Still good. All right. Get some solder here, real quickly. I'm going to go to T4. There we go. And we will take our tweezers and get to T4 here. All right, that should be all the wiring that we need to do right now, okay? But we wanna test it. So before I put anything back on, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take these off. All right, so we can put our GPS over here um, and we can take our receiver now. And again, I have to see where I'm at. I keep getting here. So we have connection one will be where the bind button is. That's fine on that side. So let's go ahead and turn this over. Okay. Excellent. All right. Now I want to make sure that none of these are going to touch. That should be fine. Everything else looks good and open, ready to go. I will disconnect the VTX so that it doesn't cut into our power at all, or our feed. All right. And let's go ahead and plug in our uh, USB so we can set this up in beta flight. Okay, so now in beta flight, here's what we need to do, right? So we want telemetry. Okay, so let's get back over here. So we're going to log in and let's go to our ports. Everything is set up here. So we have UART 1, which is our S bus, and we did activate smart port on UART 4. Leave that alone. Everything's good there. Uh, let's scroll down. Uh, we have our S bus ready here. What we want to do now is turn on telemetry. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click save and reboot. Now, um, without, without having to power this up, we have our receiver on. So I will show you this here real quickly. 
all right so there's our receiver and we've got this the light blinking okay now remember we're running access on this one so to set up access is a little different so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna try to make some space here for you guys to see okay so there's the radio i mean there's the receiver and here's the radio we're going to use the x90 plus uh, 2019 edition with access you can see i've got the module on the back okay all right so let's go ahead and power this up Welcome to okay so uh Oh, I already have an, uh, that's cool. So I have a model here already configured for this. So this is what we use when we're testing customer stuff. So I'm gonna go into that, click page. And if you set up a model, basically you're setting up a model like normal, here's what you wanna pay attention to. We're running access, so you want to go to your internal, okay? And um, we're actually going, well, no, that was the M plus, sorry, that's not the, uh, that wasn't the, that's not the R9M plus, my, uh, R9, um, oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm losing my mind. R9 Slim, cool. Okay, so I thought I had an R9 Slim here actually on my list. Let me see. Uh, R9 Slim OTA, there it is right there. So I'm gonna go to this one. I'm gonna select that model and hold it down and click select. Okay, and then hit page. All right, so when I scroll backwards, here's what we're gonna see. You see the R9M access, right? All right, uh, so first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're using external because we're using the module. So internal here, Right? You're going to click it and turn it off. Okay? Now let's go to external. External is R9M access. That's what we're using. All right? I'm going to turn this this way. Let's try to help us here a little bit. All right. Now, the one thing that's going to make this a little difficult is that um, I do not want to use it off of the uh, USB because I want to be able to flip this power switch so that I can bind easier. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to plug in the power and I'm going to remove the USB, right? So now our receiver has no power to it at all. Okay, you guys can see that right here. All right, let me make sure what power I'm at, by the way. So we are at 11.6, let me give it, I'm, I'm using a DC converter, DC to DC, so there we go. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. First thing we're gonna do is make sure that our external, is the R9M access, we are, I set my receiver to number nine. Uh, I have nothing registered. I did have an old one here registered. So I'm gonna go ahead. You can see where it says receiver one. I'm just gonna hold that. Oops. Let me go here. I'm gonna hold that down and I'm just gonna delete it. Okay, and I wanna delete the receiver. All right, so we have nothing registered right now, but we are receiver number nine, which matches my model number. So fail safe, not registered module, register range, option, blah, blah, blah. What we wanna do first is we wanna just do receiver bind, okay? So to do that, we're gonna take our receiver. And we're gonna hold our bind button down. Okay, we're gonna actually register it first. Hold our bind button down and turn it on. Okay, you can see now that it has a red and green light that are solid, okay? Now what we're gonna go here is we're gonna go up to our register. See where it says module and register, and then click that. And automatically it detects R9 Slim-0. That means it detected this receiver. Once it does that, hit enter. Okay, it says registration is okay. Hit okay. All right, now I, what I'll do here is I'll turn off the receiver now okay so I'm gonna ch shut the power down here all right now now I need to bind it now I've registered the receiver now it's time to bind it you do not press this button this time okay all you do is you um, go to your uh, let me see there's an order here that is going to be uh, the following I believe what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to receiver one and hit bind okay and just have it sit there waiting then turn on your receiver and it'll automatically find it right there okay and then hit enter, and it says bind successful. Click OK. Then you can exit out, and there you go. You have a solid green light on your receiver, and you have your telemetry coming in, your RSSI telemetry coming in on your um, transmitter. So you are now bound perfect, right? So now what we have to do is we have to see if we're getting telemetry. This is the next part of this. All right. So again, just to recap real quickly, you want to register first so to register you put your uh you put your um uh, radio in the register setting you will you will have your receiver off you will hold the uh, bind button down you'll power it on okay then you can register and it'll pop up on here all right once that's done you get out you click okay and you exit the registering then you go to bind you put your radio in bind mode first turn your quad off put your radio in bind mode so you hear the chirping 
Then don't press this find button again. It's already registered. Then all you do is just power up the receiver and it'll pop up on there, okay? So make sure, because if you do it the other way, if you put this in, if you turn this on and then go to bind mode, it won't find it. You have to have the radio in bind mode first before it can find your registered receiver. All right, good. Now that we're there, let's go to set up our telemetry. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our menu here, uh, go to our radio that is, and we're gonna, um, let me see, I'm trying to remember how it is. So, so you hit menu. And then you can, I'm just gonna press page multiple times so you can hold it down and go backwards, right? Or, you, and you see I'm on 13 and 13, and if I hold it down, I go to 12. This is my telemetry page right here, okay? And what I wanna do is, I'm gonna get by default uh, the simple things, okay? So I'm just gonna get some simple uh, default values here. But what I wanna do is I wanna find all my telemetry from the drone, okay? So I'm gonna say discover new sensors. And you see that? automatically populates and there's all my sensors now populate that's it there's nothing to do as far as going into beta flight and having to change anything on this side on this f7 board so once you're done with that now you can get everything watch let me show you let me give you an example so I'm, it's already discovered them and found them so now i'm just going to say stop discovering okay so there's everything see that vfas right there that's the voltage that's going in that's like your lipo voltage okay and what's important about this watch as i adjust mine here my reading on the screen says 13 i'm going to go ahead and turn it down here, I don't mean the light to turn off, but look. Okay, so you see how it's going up and down? I'm gonna keep dropping it. Look at that, it's gonna go to the 11s now. Right here, you see how that's going to the 11s? Now I'm gonna raise it back up. You see how it's going up? So that's that's a direct relation to my um, to my uh, battery power, my VFAS, right? Which is really important. So when I do that, now I'm done. I've got my telemetry set up. Now all I have to do is if I wanna hold my page button down, you see I have no telemetry screens here, right? So what I wanna do is I can go to menu, and then hold my page button down and go to my display. See that display right there? Voltage source, I can click that, and I could say, I want my VFAS to be my voltage source. Now watch what happens. All of a sudden, there's my voltage of my battery, okay? My actual LiPo cell that's on my drone. This is great information for you guys because you can start setting up things, for example, like this. So let's say I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna hit page, and I'm gonna say, okay, on screen one, on screen, am I on screen one? I'm gonna say I wanna use, uh, I'll use numbers, okay? I'm going to go to my first option here, and I'm going to say I want to know where my V. I'm going to do VFAS again, just because, okay? Um, there it is, VFAS, not plus or not plus or minus V, just VFAS, right? There's that. And then let's say the next one I want to do my. Uh, let me see what will allow me here. Sorry, I'm scrolling through trying to find something that may be easy here or not. Let me just see. RSSI, I wanna see my RSSI, okay? And I wanna see that in numbers. So now when I click exit, if I hit page, oops, if I hold down page, see? I have my VFAS and now I have my RSSI, okay? So once you get this telemetry set up, man, you could add anything you want. And then you could do something like this, and I'll end this video here then. Then you could do something like this, and I, I may screw this up a little bit, bear with me. But let's just say I go to menu and page, and now I'm gonna to go to my, um, uh, let's see, where am I at? Let me go to my, it special functions? I think it's special functions. Let me see. And I'm going to say, let's just say SA is my arm switch, okay? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, this may not be what I wanted to do. Let me go back one. Let's click this. And let's just say, okay, so we're going to say if A is, is, if A is less than X, I, I know I'm going to make this a, a problem. I probably shouldn't have done this. So if the, um, let's say if my SA is switched down, okay, and we want to we want to have it switched down because that's where my arming would be. So let me go ahead and find that and switch down. Hold on. Okay. Probably not. VFAS, here we go. Okay. If VFAS, sorry, is is uh, less than, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, let's say it's less than 13, uh, we'll say 13 volts, okay? So let me go down to 13 volts. Sorry guys, I've been a while since I've done this, but I wanna show you the benefits of doing this. Uh, and 
uh, my switch is in arm position, SA down, right? Right, and so, uh, and we say duration doesn't matter, okay? So we're just gonna say that logical switch, if, if A, which is VFAST, is less than X, which is this, and my switch is down, and we can say for A uh, duration of, now we won't do delay either. So let's just leave it like that and then we're gonna to go to page, okay? So now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna to go to our, we're gonna find our logical function. So L, oh my goodness, find the stupid thing. I'm scrolling, I'm gonna find it here in a second. L01, okay? So if L01 is true, then what we're gonna say is we want it to play a sound and we're gonna have it play uh, low battery. Oh, you know what? I don't think that I have the sound on here. That may be, uh, I don't know what warning one is, but we'll just tell it to play. So let's see what happens, okay? I'm gonna turn the voltage down, there you go. See, I just turned the voltage down, but I really wanna know where, um, I don't have all the sounds on this, on this, uh, hold on, let me do this. Let, let me try this, maybe it's not play sound. Let's play track, let's try, play track. There we go, there we go. So I, it's not a play sound, it's a play track, and I should have a low, low bat right here. Okay, and we're gonna play it. Battery. I'm not really sure. Low battery. I want it through. Low battery. Low there we go. Battery. So, so Low what's, here's battery. what's gonna happen, right? So Low what? Battery. I'm gonna turn the I'm gonna turn the voltage back up. So here's what we've just done. This is why S port. This is why telemetry is really important. So you can see that we have 13.76 here, right? Uh, that's what we set up on our screen, right? Now, if we if we uh, go to our telemetry, um, uh, sorry, if we go to our sections here, what I just changed, so I went to our um, logical switches, and I used the A is greater than X, right? So if you look at this, if A is greater than X, or less than, I mean, if A is less than X, so A is VFAST, which is your battery, is less than 13 volts, and... The SA switch is down. Now I'm saying SA because that would be my arming switch. So this would be arming position for me, okay? So, and I'm in arm position, right? And I'm not messing with duration or anything else. So if I do this, right? That's my logical switch. That's my if, if then statement, right? So then what I do is I go to my next page and I say, okay, now my special functions. And I find my logical switch, which is L01. And I put it in here and I say, if this happens, I want you to play this track, low battery, okay? And I want you to play it every second, that annoying low battery noise, right? So now watch what happens. We're at 13.76 and I'm in arm position. So I'm gonna lower my voltage on the converter here. No, battery. Okay, now you see how we're 13.3, I'll lower no, it. There battery. you go. We're below 13 no, volts, battery. which is what we set on our no, system. But battery. if I flip the arm switch off, it stops, right? So no, on, battery. there you go, off, done. So all this is, is it starts giving you these if then statements. And I know this is outside of installing this receiver, but what I do want you to see is that by doing that, um, once you get telemetry, and man, you can do all kinds of things. You can tell it that you wanna know when it's at a certain altitude. You can tell it you wanna know when it's at a certain battery level. I mean, you can tell it when you wanna know if any of your values have gone too high, throttle, pitch, roll, y'all, all of those things. So there's a lot of things you can do, and therefore the audibles start working, and you can kind of fly with a little bit more freedom knowing that your audibles are gonna kick in if there's a problem, okay? Now, that being said, there's one last thing to do. I need to log in back into Betaflight here. So let's go ahead and go to Betaflight. Let me connect. Oops, I disconnected this, I forgot. Let me connect Betaflight. There we go. We're gonna connect. And that beeping right there, I'm just gonna arm the motors real quickly so that I can um, get them to stop. There we go, turn that off, the beeping will stop. Now let's go to receiver. And the one thing that I do want you to see is that the way my receiver and transmitter are set up, I need to go down here. 
and just change this over to this uh, to this mapping here, this uh, channel map right here. Now everything's set. I got all my stuff battery. working here. Okay, and everything's done. That's it. This system is ready to go, guys. I hope that helps you. I know I went a little bit farther than what I said by going into the um, by going into the uh, how logical switches and things you can do on the radio. And that was very quick. Hopefully not too confusing setup, but I will do a whole video on logical switches. I think they're pretty cool. And there's a lot of things you can do. I mean, you can make your quad perform certain functions, literally flying certain ways if you set up switches properly. Um, uh, so anyways, that's it. Guys, if you have any questions, as always, uh, I do encourage you to go to our Facebook group. It's easy. Just sign up there. Uh, we'll approve it, and then you can get in and start asking questions. A lot of the members there will help you out. And then, as always, guys, I will ask you, please, 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 please subscribe to our channel. I uh, don't ask for anything else. Just subscribe to it and let me kind of brag to my kids that we're growing with viewers, okay? Other than that, guys, God bless. Be safe. And most of all, make sure to spend time with your family. You never know how much time you have left, guys. Go make the most of it. You can always fly later. All right? Talk to you soon. Peace. Bye.